There is a completely isolated tribe that no one is supposed to go near, but one man did and paid the ultimate price. Hello and welcome back or welcome to my channel. If you don't know what's going on here, I'm a horror artist and I like to draw what I talk about in the videos. Now, nothing in the videos is meant to be insensitive to the victim or the victim's family, but I will be accountable for my art. But if you are a sensitive person, I recommend not watching my channel because some of these pictures that I do draw to the stories might upset some people especially today's one so yeah you've been warned with that being said let's get on with the video there are just some regions of the planet that you just don't go near and isolated remote islands with killer tribes is one of them an island that is controlled by India called North Sentinel Island is home to an indigenous tribe called the Sentinelese that are completely cut off from the rest of the world. The island is 1300 kilometers off India's mainland and it's forbidden for anyone to go there because it's dangerous, not only to the tribe for outside diseases that they have no immunity to, but also for someone who is silly enough to go there because the tribe is extremely hostile to outsiders. These people have lived on the island for over 55,000 years and have no idea on the life that normal people live. They are hunter gatherers and they are protected by the law. This didn't stop a 26 year old man named John Allen Chow from traveling over to these islands to try and convert them to Christianity. John was a Chinese American from Scottsboro, Alabama and a Christian missionary that had a love for camping, hiking and traveling right from a young age. He loved doing missionary trips to Mexico, South Africa and Iraq. He did visit the Andaman Island chain right where the Sentinelese tribe are located in 2015 and 2016 on a missionary trip, but he did not go anywhere near North Sentinel Island. In 2017, he apparently went to a boot camp that was supposed to prepare missionaries for going onto islands or locations with hostile natives. Even the staff of the boot camp set up scenes pretending to be natives with spears, but nothing would prepare him for what was to come from the Sentinelese. In October 2018, John illegally traveled to the North Sentinel Island. Before going there, he had prepared a contact kit which consisted of communication cards, gifts, medical equipment and other stuff to be able to assist and communicate with the Sentinel people. He arrived at Port Blair, the capital of the Andaman Islands region, and retreated in a safe house. John needed to get government permission to visit this island, and he never did, and it's highly illegal to go there without it, and by past events, which I will get into later. It will probably would never have happened and would never have been accepted because of the protection over the indigenous tribe. In November 2018, John traveled over to North Sentinel Island by paying six fishermen 335 US dollars to take him close to the island. He believed that North Sentinel Island was the last place on earth that quote unquote, Satan inhabited. He was vaccinated and self quarantined for 11 days to make sure he had nothing that could be passed on to the tribe and then proceeded to go and live amongst the tribe and make them learn about Christianity and convert them. John wrote in a diary to document his feelings before going to the island. One entry said, Lord, is this island Satan's last stronghold where none have heard or even had a chance to hear your name? The eternal lives of this tribe is at hand. I think it's worthwhile to declare Jesus to these people. Please do not be angry at them or at God if I get killed. Don't retrieve my body. On the 15th of November 2018, he tried a first attempt by night to get to the island to stay undetected by surveilling coast guards. The fishermen took him as far as 500 meters off the shoreline where John stripped down to his undies to have a sense of similarity to the tribe and then canoed the rest of the way. The fishermen warned John to not go any further but he did anyway. He took a waterproof bible with him in a canoe as well and headed over in the morning but when he got closer to the shore he was met with hostile tribe people so he ended up going back to the fisherman's boat. The tribe's people were prepping their bows ready to fire at him so he freaked out. 
Apparently on the second attempt that same day, he was able to land on the island. He wrote in his diary that he was met with the tribe's people with a mixture of amusement, excitement and hostility. He tried to communicate with them in Kosa, a language of Southern Africa, but they didn't seem to engage. But sometimes when he spoke to them, they laughed at him, made high-pitched sounds or gestures. John's diary entry explained that he tried to give them gifts but was shot in the Bible by an arrow which he held in front of his chest. One of the young boys in the tribe was responsible for this. John ended up leaving again but this time he had to swim nearly three kilometers to the fisherman's boat as the tribe had taken his canoe. He was truly terrified but wrote on in his journal saying that he cried a bit and was watching the sunset as it might be his last. But he stated that it was worth it to declare Jesus to the tribe. On the 17th of November 2018, John got the fisherman to drop him off, but this time for good and not return to pick him up. John left his diary with the fisherman. The fisherman left but returned later that day to see what had happened. This is when the fishermen saw the islanders dragging John's lifeless body along the shore by a rope around his neck. The next day, the fishermen returned again and saw John's body just lying on the beach, allegedly killed by arrows, and then they buried him after that. The fishermen headed back to Port Blair to hand the diary to a friend of John's that the fishermen were asked to do, named Alexander, who was a fellow Christian and preacher so he could inform John's family of the news. On the 21st of November 2018, attempts to retrieve John's body were made by the Indian police, but it was too hostile and put a lot of authority figures in danger from the tribe. John received criticism from people all around the world and also the evangelical organization that trained him got crucified as well. John's own father was not impressed by the organization and he blamed them for instilling radical views in John's head. The fact that the organization called John a martyr annoyed a lot of people as well. There was a murder investigation opened, but that was later closed and made into a warning for anyone who wants to visit this island so that there was no repeats of this kind of event ever again. John documented his adventures on his social media and always threw himself into charities, clubs and other activities that pushed the extreme barriers. John was the kind of person that would stay away from sexual encounters and relationships as he thought it was irresponsible and focused on other things instead. So I'd say when he died, he died a virgin. Not that that's relevant, but I just thought I would mention that in the story. Apparently John's burden was to save the Sentinelese people and teach them about God and Jesus and that Jesus died for their sins. It was something he had to do and no one could relieve him from it until he did it. And that required ignoring bands to go to the island. John's body may never be recovered from the island because of mentioned liabilities and plus the exact location of John's body is unclear. There is an estimation, but that is it. Apparently, the Indian authorities went to investigate and they said that they stayed well away in their patrol boats so they were not in arrow range and just observed. The tribe seemed to be guarding something with weapons and authorities think it may be where John was buried. They were probably worried that someone was coming to retrieve the body, so they stood guard and made sure that nobody else came near. The fishermen and two others that John was friends with that also set up everything to help John were allegedly arrested over aiding the death of John. There is said to be roughly 40 to 200 Sentinelese on the island. Now this case is one that doesn't follow the norm as it requires to place the tribe under arrest for murder, but they are a culture that does not follow the rules of the rest of the world. You can't enforce rules where a place has been set away and isolated and is also protected and going there violates rules set up by the Indian government so you can see the problem. Plus these people don't know any better. They, they have no idea. But John isn't the only person killed by the tribe. 
In 2006, two Indian fishermen were killed and hung up on posts after their boat drifted ashore. They were apparently poachers and were fishing illegally around the island. The tribe firstly killed the two and buried them in shallow graves. Then a week later, after burying them, the tribe dug them up and tied them to lengths of bamboo upright. If the tribe followed this ritual, they may have done the same to John. Now, I've read some conflicting stories on these two bodies. Uh, some reports say that they were retrieved and others say that they weren't. Now, if you know for sure, please let me know in the comments below. Now, in my opinion on this event, he should never have gone there. These people just want to be left alone and John probably should have accepted that. Not everyone feels the same way about religion and these people were already living naturally off the land uh, and were probably, you know, abiding by the so-called Bible, if you believe in that. I don't follow it. I, I am not a fan of religion. You know, these people just have to accept this and stop thinking that everyone needs to agree with their point of view on life. Everyone is different and that's what annoys me about some people. People need to focus on their own life and stop trying to make other people into what they want them to be. Now, I know that John was probably in his mind doing the right thing or thinking he was doing the right thing, but you just need to leave people alone. Tell me your thoughts on this case. How do you feel about John going to the island? Do you think that he was doing the right thing or do you think he was being selfish and reckless? Leave a comment and your opinion below because I love hearing people's opinions on this sort of stuff. And also, if there is any other information that you know about that I didn't cover in today's video, please let me know as well in the comments below. Now, the illustration that I decided to do for the video today is inspired by uh, some of the events in the story. I decided to go down the route of um, a little bit of a monster alien cross tribe member who uh, is obviously, uh, you know, does not have a single clue on the outside world and has decided to string up two, uh, I wouldn't say that they're humans, they are other entities that have stumbled across his part of the world and he has hung them up and uh, yeah by ropes one around the neck and one of them's just being hung up by his arms one of the legs of the legs of one of the beings has been cut off and the other one's been disemboweled with some of the organs hanging out and some weird bubbly things coming out it's just it's just a creature they're just creatures um you know just what I had a vision of when I thought of this story. And there's also a Bible on the ground that has an arrow through it. And because, yeah, one of these entities was carrying a Bible and they shot at it with a bow and arrow like in the story. So I had to add that element as well. But anyway, that is it from me. If you like this kind of content, like and subscribe, dislike it, couldn't care less, all goes towards the algorithm uh, that helps other people find me if they like this kind of content. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.